Dear viewers, have you ever wondered how advertising technology has grown leaps and bounds in the recent years? For instance, I was looking for some stay options for a break at a hill station. While the trip has been cancelled, there are still pop-ups and random advertisements that keep appearing whenever I am on my mobile. Well, I'm sure you too had moments when you wondered how your mobile knows everything that you need or are thinking about. It's like a genie ready to pop up to cater to whatever we are aspiring or wishing for. Beat your midnight food cravings or some workshops that you have been intending to attend. There's a way to everything through a pop-up and a click. Now, this is no random occurrence. There's a lot of intentional work in place. There are businesses collecting billions of data points and making sense of it using AI and machine learning for companies to grow business and for users to consume more. Like it or not, the big data is here. So is AI. Now combine the two and what you're likely looking at is a business model with network effects, humongous scalability and market opportunity. Today, I'm going to talk about two such businesses. The first is Apple India Limited. Backed by patents, this edtech or advertising tech company has an in-house data management platform or DMP with reach to over 3 billion devices. Huge access to data along with AI and ML capabilities drives its real-time predictive algorithm. Through Apple, the advertisers or company's clients are able to show high impact and contextual advertisements at different touch points of a consumer's journey on the mobile phone and other digital devices. Besides, the company also offers a fraud detection platform to help maximize the return on investment for its clients. Over 90% of Apple's revenue come from fast-growing verticals like education tech, fintech, food tech, gaming, hospitality, travel, health tech, and so on. Do note that Apple India's key revenue driver is not based on views or clicks on ads, but a desired outcome for the ad agencies or brands which means that the company makes money only when the user converts. Now, conversion is the final action that advertisers want from users. It could be a first-time buy, a repeat transaction, signing up for an event or publication, registering for an offline event, installation of an app, and so on. This revenue model is called CPCU, or cost per converted user. It ensures high return on investment for advertisers. Focus on higher conversion makes it a win-win model for the company and its clients. Then there is this element of network effects. When advertisers get good returns or response from customers for a given ad budget, the company attracts even higher marketing budget allocations, which allows it to access more consumer data and to grow its data sets. This leads to higher prediction accuracy and better results for ad recommendation algorithm allowing it to show more personalized ads and better targeting for customers. This benefits both the company and its clients, and the virtuous cycle goes on to compound into a huge networking effect. 90% of the company's revenues are based on CPCU. The remaining come from app development business for enterprises, from data analytics, from offering brand visibility, and online to offline commerce, etc. Now, second differentiating factor for FL as compared to other ad tech firms is focus on emerging markets. Almost 90% of companies' revenue come from emerging markets such as Southeast Asia, Middle East Africa, and Latin America, etc. Unlike US and UK and other mature markets where smartphone penetration is 80%, emerging markets offer a huge growth potential with smartphone penetration at 32% in India, 51% in Brazil, and 59% in Indonesia. With growing use of connected digital devices, which go beyond smartphones and rapid digitization of existing and new industry verticals, the runway for company is long. By the end of the decade, the company aims to reach 10 billion devices from 3 billion devices at present. The company has shown good growth in the long term and healthy return ratios along with a strong balance sheet. The stock trades at a PE of 55 times. Coming to the second stock, it's Rate Gain Travel Technologies Limited. The company is the largest SaaS or software as a service provider in travel and hospitality segment in India. It helps clients in the hotels, airlines, online travel aggregators like Expedia to acquire guests and service them and drive engagement with them to command better wallet share through its AI-powered tech platform. The first is data as a service, around 29% of the revenue, through which it provides real-time insights into demand supply and pricing trends in the industry. This helps its clients such as hotel, airlines, and OTAs to price their inventory accordingly. 
The revenues in this segment are based on subscription, where clients pay a fee to access a service, and on a hybrid model, where a minimum subscription fee is followed by pay per use charge. The second division is distribution, which is 34% of the revenue. Under distribution segment, it ensures seamless connectivity between hotels and their demand partners, for example, let's say online travel aggregators and with global distributors. This requires efficient real-time communication about inventory availability, updating gallery, guest reviews, processing, bookings, pricing, etc. in a standardized format. The revenue in this segment come from subscription and transactions. Under transaction-based model, the company generates revenue whenever a guest makes a booking. The third division is MarTech, or basically marketing tech, accounting for the highest share in revenues of 37%. Here, the company offers AI and digital marketing tools and services to help hotels improve brand presence on social media, boosting direct bookings and monitoring engagement. Since the company already has a lot of data based on travel intent, it uses it to drive business for clients and offers performance-based marketing. The revenues are based on subscriptions here. Of the three, marketing tech is the fastest growing vertical. Overall, subscription revenue accounts for 75% revenue share, offering healthy visibility in the business. The company enjoys high revenue retention rates of over 90%. The business is going in the right direction as a lifetime value to customer acquisition cost has been inching up and is at over 20 times at present. LTV or lifetime value is arrived at by multiplying gross margin from new sales with expected lifetime of the contract. CAC or customer acquisition cost is arrived at by dividing sales and marketing costs by number of customers added. The company has grown its revenue by 54% in FY23 while operating profit was up 164%. The balance sheet is debt free. For FY24, the management has shared a guidance of 55 to 58% growth with fat margin at 12%. The return ratios are 10%. The risk is down cycle in the travel industry or cut down in the marketing budgets or its outsourcing. The stock is trading at 62 times PE. So these are the two stocks riding high on click economy and big data and AI revolution. Please do not take today's discussion as a view on any of the stocks. The video is for educational purpose only. If you found the content valuable, let me know through your likes, shares and comments. For more such video alerts, subscribe to Equity Master YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.